good people in TMP, all you awesome dudes out there. There is a lot of love for a quality, superior, double action, combat revolver like the Smith & Wesson 686. And they love it. They just love it. Really 2010 it. SHOT Show, nothing fancy. Another booth review. How about we go check out Smith & Wesson. There's a lot of cool stuff going on in this booth. There's a lot of guns. There's no way I can go and cover every gun they have here. What I can do is pick and choose, and I'm gonna pick and choose the stuff that I'm interested in, and I know that my viewers are gonna be interested in. Let's start off with a cool MMP 1522 line. And we've got one of the representatives here from Smith & Wesson waiting for us. Hi, sir, what's your name? My name's Matt Nyman. Hey, Matt, thank you so much for hosting us and allowing us to come in the booth to talk guns. You bet. What I've got here is our brand new MMP 1522 Mo. <clears throat> okay, it stands for Magpul Original Equipment. We launched the MMP 1522 line uh, in 2009. It's been hugely successful, extremely popular. Uh, and so what we're doing in 2010 is we're, we're just up, we're just uh, adding to the line with the 1522 Mo. Essentially what we've done is we've upgraded it right. with the Magpul backup sights, the M bus sights, both front and rear. They're folding, spring-loaded flip-up sights front and like I said rear as well nice in addition we're upgrading it with your Magpul original equipment stock and Magpul original equipment grip right and I love that stuff the MOE line of Magpul does everything the CTR does and the other grips that they sell but at a lower price point but the ergos are outstanding exactly so added value uh, added features for the customer amen the other nice uh, the other unique feature on the MOE the 1522 mo is the single point sling attachments uh, that we integrated into the low receiver essentially what we've done is nice. we've integrated sling swivel cups on both the right and left side of the receiver. Outstanding. So built the, in, you don't have to buy anything extra. Exactly, built in, it will come with one standard uh, push button QD style sling swivel. Okay, so then you can either uh, put a sling strap through there, we'll also accept uh, like an HK style hook. Yep. Again, four single point sling attachment on right our on. weapon. Okay. Because the great thing about the 1522 is that we designed it with all the function functionality of a standard AR-15. Amen. So not only is the 1522 a great sporting rifle for environment hunting and target shooting, but it's a completely practical training tool for law enforcement and military because you've got a standard mag release, okay? Our standard 25 round uh, 1522 magazines will fit in most aftermarket AR-15 style mag pouches. Yep, and the form factor, like I've said, a lot of my reviews dudes is huge for training. I love the 1022, the SR-22, they're great options. You can train around it, but there's really no, uh, there's really no, uh, uh, bettering getting that same form factor. Well, exactly, and like I said, so you can train with this and all your motor skills and what you're doing is gonna be exactly the same as what you would do with your 5.56 from your bolt release to yep. your charging handle. The great thing about uh, the 1522 is that bolt locks back after the last round on That's empty. That's a huge benefit. It beats the 22 conversions, which exactly. usually do so, not. So for reloading drills. Actually, I correct myself. Some do, some so, don't. So for reloading drills, you get that lock back feature. Yep. And same motor skills, releasing now, that. And that, let me bring this up as a point. Notice that he was using the bolt release here. That that is uh, functional, of course, on this gun. Exactly. The other nice thing is the safety selector. Same function, same location as on your AR-15. So, again, obviously the most important thing when you're training is safety. You're going through the same safety skills and same movement with your thumb as you would on a standard AR-15. Amen. And the last thing is the trigger, the fire control group on the 1520. Too, again is a standard AR-15 fire control group. So Great can, selling point. So you can upgrade your, your trigger group if you want. You can put match triggers in this. Cool. So anything you want, uh, you can do a trigger job, put in a Chip McCormick, Timney, whatever you want. Exactly, but what I would like to stress is that this is a dedicated 22 platform, meaning you cannot interchange right. lower receiver with upper receivers uh, with 5.56 um, upper or lowers. You guys chose to go with a polymer, completely polymer gun. Is that for lightweight? 
cost of manufacture? Both. Both. Okay. We, it, it's extremely uh, high strength, lightweight. We've done a ton of endurance testing, impact testing on this platform. So you're getting extremely durable, high strength, lightweight polymer. And like you mentioned, uh, reduces our the cost that we have to pass on to our customer. Amen, brother. Uh, and I'll tell you, having shot lots of polymer guns, I have nothing but good to say about it. Polymer is proven. At this point, it's proven. If it's designed right and if it's manufactured correctly. Last feature on this I want to point out is it's, it's modularity. So you're getting a standard 1913 style Picatinny rail handguard. So you can, also polymer. Also polymer. So you can, uh, again, you can modify this with your vertical foregrips, your light mounts. Again, if you've got your 5.56 gun in the closet set up the way you like it, you can convert all those accessories onto this platform so you're getting the same training for a tenth of the cost in ammunition. Amen. This will be a good point for me to roll in. Nothing fancy philosophy. You'll see more on this later. And that is the concept of the Tactical 22. Uh, and you've talked to it already. In other words, have a gun that is outfitted with lights, grips, uh, as you saw, a sling adjustment, and it mimics your tactical carbine. That's a Tactical 22. Something that you can run and gun with, a la Nut and Fancy style, and do your training and recreating with your firearm. Um, and all those things are necessary. That rail space, somewhere along there to attach a light. If you want a VG, then you'll have to integrate that. No, this is not the only option to use. You could use uh, 1022, the SR22. The Tapco stocks are outstanding using your 1022. You'll lose the full size form factor of the AR15, M16, M4 mag, like we talked about. But Tapco 22s, man, uh, just for fun, forget training. Just going out and having a good time and having a blast, pun intended. Tactical 22s are where it's at. Oh, I was going to have him show some other ones. Uh, he ran off. He's getting some uh, tactical carvings ready. Look, there's their other one. They've come out with a threaded version of the M&P 22, 1522. Their plain muzzle is was originally introduced. You'll see that one out. That's their original one. And also, Matt, did that include the sights on it, this one? Yes, all of our guns come standard with uh, with removable, uh, adjustable sights. Right, okay, cool. So there's your normal M&P 1522. I like that one. The one you showed us, the MOE equipped, nice. And I think on this POU, these polymer uh, Magpul sights will work fine for that POU. And there's the one with the flash fighter. Look at that. Are these, these are the center fire ones, huh? Correct, yes sir. Okay, what you got there, boss? Uh, the next one I'm gonna show you is our uh, new piston operating system, so. Okay, let's put it, maybe we can see it here. If we put it on this table. Yeah, sure. Got good lighting, well, better lighting. So what we've done is we've uh, taken our M&P 15 platform, our 5.56 platform, and we've integrated a short stroke uh, piston operating system into it. <clears throat> What I want to stress with our piston system is simplicity and reliability. It's an extremely simple system, a uh, few parts, which again leads to its reliability. A couple of the unique features are the adjustable gas plug, so you can adjust your gas port diameter based on uh, your application. Yep. So the standard open position, uh, which is basically for general use, general purpose um, firing, you've got a reduced port position when you yep. rotate. Very standard with a lot of piston guns when you, that adjustability. Yep, when you rotate that to the one o'clock yep. reduces it, mainly for suppressed application when you put a suppressor on the okay. on uh, on your MP15 that reduced gas port pressure uh, leads to a softer, more sure. reliable system. Third position at, a, at about three o'clock is actually uh, eliminates your gas port, so it gives you a single shot. Again, mission specific. Sure. And then I see you got an M4 profile barrel here. Yep, standard M4 profile barrel. And then if you rotate it to the nine o'clock, that you can remove your entire piston operating system right out the front of the gas block. All right. What's nice about that is obviously you, you'd have the top of your handguard on your system when you're when you're uh, running it. So if you need to remove your plug or op rod for cleaning, maintenance, um, whatever's needed, sure, it you can do it. Pops right, right out. Like right some up. other guns, like the Ruger SR556, you can't do it. Okay. Uh, can we take a look inside? I want to see your bulk carrier group and see what you did to mitigate uh, carrier tilt. Yes, sir. On that. A couple unique things about the carrier group that you'll notice. It's a one-piece carrier, meaning your strike face is machined right into it. Yep, integral anvil on the top that the piston strikes. Exactly. Okay. On no the bottom. No gas key problems. No gas key problems. There you go, you can hold that okay. up. Um, the rear of your bolt, you'll see what we've done with the outer diameter, as well as your taper going towards the tail. So again, um, helping reduce that carrier tilt and giving it a, a smoother and straighter plane of travel into your receiver extension tube.
Word up. Word up. We've also incorporated a spring on the tail of the bolt, helping uh, helping with extraction as well as that overall movement. That's a cool feature. Yes, I haven't sir. seen that before. Uh, your center fire, and not just your piston guns, but the MP series, the 556 series, all along. What kind of results are you hearing from it? Fantastic re results. A lot of cops using it too, yeah, right? We're, we're getting uh, great results uh, both on, in the law enforcement market as well as our uh, commercial users. I hear the same thing. I think it's a well put together gun whether you go with a, uh, this is a new gun, right? Yes, sir. The piston, is it in your catalog yet? Uh, it is in our catalog. Actually, we just started shipping uh, our piston systems um, this month. Okay. Uh, I'd be, you know, I haven't shot personally your 556 versions, but I look forward to doing so. I have had some friends give me some feedback and it's always been positive. Great. Big thumbs up. Uh, any variations? Let's go look at your DI guns. Any variations we can talk about there? Sure. We'll follow you. Lots of people here in the Smith & Wesson booth. We gotta push our way through the crowd. Wicked. Look at this cool logo they got. It's like a light shining on the carpet. Excellent. Here we go. I'm with you, dude. So the first one I wanna go over is this top one, our new m p 15 TS. So what we've done, what's unique about this, uh, you can see we've added, uh, again, some of the Magpul, uh, Mo, Magpul original equipment, uh, stock grip, yep. as well as the end bus folding sights. Great value to the, uh, to the end user. Also, we've incorporated Troy Industries' new TRX Extreme Handguard on here. Uh, extremely uh, low profile and lightweight. Yeah, I love that. And the most unique thing is we're giving the end user a 14 and a half inch barrel with a welded Smith Vortex flash hider on here. So that's a permanently fixed flash hider, giving you an overall barrel length of 16.1 inches. Excellent. Totally legal. That's a carbine uh, gas system, it looks like. Low profile block. How about attachment to any Picatinny rails? I really don't see a provision for that on that rail. Actually, this gun's gonna come with two two inch sections of Picatinny rail with, the, uh, with attachment hardware, so you can attach them basically in any of these circular cutouts that oh, locks cool. in. Okay. So again, uh, very modular, so you can put those two pieces anywhere for vertical foregrips, light mounts, lasers. Awesome, look how narrow and low profile that is. Just what Matt had said. Look at that, that is awesome. And it's relatively lightweight. You don't know the weight on that offhand, do you, Matt? No, it's probably coming in around six pounds. But again, I don't know the exact weight. Yeah. Cool. Got a little aim point on there. Red that dot. Doesn't doesn't come with that, of sure. course. But that's an expensive side. I've said that before. And this version is. This is our MP15 uh, VTAC. We've had this in the line for uh, for a little over a year now. Mm -hmm. uh, been right. extremely popular. Basically. It, an upgraded weapon system. You're getting your Voltor mod stock, right? you're getting your JP modular handguard. Again, comes with three sections of rail that can uh, attach to any of these slotted sections, as well as your threaded holes on the top. You're getting a Surefire flash hider, so top top end flash hider, uh, also a suppressor, uh, uh, quick quick attach for Surefire suppressor. Yep. Uh, the barrel and length on that is 16 plus six, the suppressor, right? 16 inch, okay, plus, plus, your, FP. plus your flash hider. Okay. okay. Just come standard with the flash hider. Uh, and most importantly, you're getting an upgraded JP single stage match trigger in this gun. Yeah. It also comes with several other uh, accessories. It comes with uh, Viking Tactics light mount, a Surefire G2 flashlight, as well as uh, Viking Tactics two point um, paddock slate. Wow, that's light. Yes, sir. I am surprised how light that is, honestly. I'd put that at about just under seven. Let's look at the profile of barrel. I can't really see it on there. Yeah, it's a, yeah that's why. It's, an M, it's a taper down barrel barrel profile under the handguard. It goes so skinny. Profile, yeah. Profile. You pretty much use that on all your guns, then, don't you? Currently, yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm a fan of the little bit thicker, the medium contour is what I like all the way through, but I know that's really popular. Nice. Those are good guns. You're selling well for you? Very well. Yes, sir. Man, I'm surprised how light that is. It's amazing. Cool. Okay. you got some exciting stuff going on with a pistol you want to talk about, right, dude? Yes, sir. Well, come on. Over. I'm right behind you. I gotta point the camera down because there's some folks that don't want to be on camera, so I gotta respect that. Okay, what we have here is our brand new bodyguard line, uh, brand new for 2010. Just launched it here at the Shot Show. First one I'm going to show you is check that our bodyguard 380. Okay, so it's Smith and Wesson's entry into the 380 uh, auto pocket pistol market, and a few unique features on this. It comes with an integral laser sighting system. So we engineered this from the ground up to incorporate Whoa. an integral laser sighting system into the gun. It's located in your dust cover. Dude, that's cool. 
the lasers, the laser modules incorporated into your dust cover. It's got ambidextro ambidextrous controls. So your operating buttons on both the right and left side. Strategic, strategically located so that when the end user, you know, grasps his bodyguard 380, whether out of the holster, out of your pocket, right. out of your purse, briefcase, that laser operating button is right where your finger should be as you grab your bodyguard 380. Okay, so then it gives them the option of whether they want to deploy. Use the laser, laser or not. Exactly. Uh -huh. Okay, and so again, practicing proper weapon handling techniques, that's right where your finger needs to be as you come up. And if I want to deploy that laser, boom, I can. Okay, if not, then it's still right there. Multi-mode, so the first time you press it, you get a constant laser. That's what Second. I was going to ask you, is how those modes work. Second press gives you a pulse, okay? And the third time you press it, it turns that laser off. Again, ambidextrous, so right and left side. So either one-handed or two-handed nice. operation. Cool. The other nice thing about the Bodyguard 380 is it comes loaded with premium features. Starting with your slide and barrel, they're both stainless steel composition with melanite finish. Your sights are stainless steel with melanite finish. And those are real sights. They're Check real that sights. out. Dovetail. This is not milled into the sight. They are raised, very Novak like. Here you go, dude. Look at the sights on those. Dovetail, with, again, stainless steel with melanite finish. Okay. Okay. One of my favorite features, functional slide stops. Okay. So this, the Bodyguard 380 will lock back after the last round. Just like slide any full-size service pistol. Exactly. The battery, battery of arms. I just tripped Careful. over your fog machine. Dude, I feel like I'm in the little house of horrors back here. Look. <laughs> so, again, functional slide stop will yeah. lock back after last round. Nice. We also have a manual thumb safety. Okay. Added right feature. External takedown lever pops right out so you can remove your slide and barrel. Ease of maintenance. I'm impressed. Also, what that does, it gives you access to your laser module. So that right laser on. module can be removed for battery replacement. Battery wow. life on this is about three hours on constant run time. Uh, approximately doubles if you're running it on pulse. Right. And it's got a five minute auto shut off. So if you do leave it on, it will automatically shut off after five minutes. It's always good to have a dummy backup. And the laser is also uh, adjustable for windage and elevation. Right. So it's user adjustable externally. It comes with your adjustment wrench. Mil many wrenches will go in there. Yeah. Exactly. How many rounds? Six plus one? Six plus one, you got it. So again, loaded with features, uh, mainly that integral laser sighting system. The best thing about this, you get that integral laser, all these upgraded wow, features. I'm impressed. MSRP of 575. Okay, that's so, going to be probably less than the SIG. Uh, yes, uh, P238. Target less than SIG. But, and again, keep in mind that's that's MSRP, so actual retail, you know. A lot less, probably, that. right? And the weight on this, this is critical when you're talking about a concealed carry gun, in my opinion, Matt. I've talked a lot about it in my no. reviews. Weight, weight, weight under, is critical. Under 12 ounces on this wow. gun. So you're getting a true, uh, again, true That's subcompact. probably here somewhere. Was pocket that? style. Look at that. 11.85 ounces with a laser. Pocket style Ooh. profile. All right. Less Look how narrow it is. Under it's three quarters of an inch. It's a little bit higher profile than maybe some competition like the, the LCP well, the only and reason, the Caltech P380. The main reason that, that it is is because again we're giving you those real I'll take drift them. adjustable. I sights. like real sights. I like options. The guys say, well, you're only going to use it within seven yards. Maybe, maybe not. It well, depends. And, and who knows what the engagement distance will be? I'm very impressed with that gun. And it looks like you have a companion uh, 38 special. We do. Huh. We Maybe do. competing against another gun that we know. We won't mention it. This this gun Ruger is, LCR. This gun he can't mention it. I will. Completely unique. Okay. Again, engineered from the ground up, incorporating that integral laser. Okay. Uh, again, I body really like that feature. That so, is, it's right there. Uh, we partnered with Insight Insight Technology okay. on these lasers, yeah. so you're getting a, a premium laser on the Bodyguard 38. Your operating button, same modes. So you press that button once, constant on. Press it the second time, you get your pulse. Yep. Third same, time same. on. Same same thing. And the uh, actuation button on that mat is right there, right? right on the top of your nice. laser module. Uh, aluminum frame, polymer frame. Looks like polymer. What we've got is we've got a steel reinforced polymer lower and an aluminum alloy upper. We've got a stainless steel barrel and a stainless steel cylinder with PVD, physical vapor deposition coating. Ooh, that's a big word. Check that out.
Nice, so stainless steel barrel insert in an aluminum shroud. Let me show you another unique uh, feature on the Bodyguard 38. Okay. We've got a, a top mount ambidextrous cylinder release. Totally new for okay. Smith & Wesson. You'll notice. Show those guys out again, they're gonna to wanna to see that. No, no cylinder release, it's right on the top. Again, ambidextrous, so just as easy for your right or your left-handed manipulation. Nice. nice, totally different battery of arms, you'll have to train with it. Yes, sir. Uh, but cool, and a lot of guys are gonna be very stoked that you have a totally clean, Profile a la Centennial. Yes. That there's no external magazines to get hook on clothing. You can shoot it within a pocket, which everyone always says, who does that? <laughs> Nobody. It's like a detective show. Uh, grips, what you got? Uh, we got, uh, you know, it's a new grip, but it's standard boot style. Yeah. Rubber grip. Looks, so. The profile looks the same. Oh, nicely done. You didn't go with rubber. In other words, I don't like rubber because it catches on clothing. Like if I'm a concealed carry perma holder, I'm carrying it here on the side. I lean forward, my shirt rides up. Right. Rubber will hold that shirt in the up position. This is more of a smoother polymer, but you still have good traction, right? Yes, sir. Wicked. Uh, trigger pull on that. Uh, the LCR has a very nice trigger, my friend. Well, you'll see it's actually, it's, it's brand new lock work. Again, totally. Uh, brand new way of total, doing the revolver. Yeah, totally, totally new design. So it's got a uh, extremely smooth trigger pull and I'm going to let you do sure, it for yourself that so that the users can hear your feedback. And of course that safety that. check and all that. Yes, you sir. Can see in there. Exactly. We check the cylinder. Let's see. Oh my gosh, that is the worst trigger pull I've ever felt in my life. I'm just kidding, it rocks. <laughs> it is on par with any of the, those, those others. That is a nice trigger pull. Nice and smooth, yes sir. Very nice. Smooth, easy. That is, uh, in my opinion, one of the biggest things I would look for if I went with a double action only revolver. I don't care what it is. I don't want a really hard trigger. Other guys will say, well, you need a, a hard trigger, you know, for, here, I'll let you tell you that. For safety, you know, because you're under stress. Well, first off, if your gun is going to be effective, you're going to have to hit what you're shooting at. And a big, long trigger pull in these little tiny guns make them extremely hard to shoot. Like my friend TMP Research and myself say, it is a completely different skill set that you're going to have to master to connect with these targets. Back to you, Matt. What are you going to say? That, that's it. So, uh, you know, I, what I'm going to say, come out and, uh, and check them out for yourself and pick it up, feel it. Check out the features. Dude, you can't make enough of these. Uh, you can't. That's the plan. Are they in the catalog right now, 2010? Uh, we've got a specific uh, product brochure over here. For okay, and guys that are interested in these, um, do you sell these through our friends at Gallery of Guns, Davidson's? Uh, we will be. They'll be available in May 2010, so they'll, uh, okay. they won't be out into the market until May. Okay, so check your local dealers for these guns if you want them. I know you guys will. Um, my take on this, and you guys tune into the Nut and Fancy Show for me to just give you my opinion. Uh, from what I've seen, the Bodyguard 380 by Smith & Wesson is a home run. Uh, why? Look at the weight. Under 12 ounces, integrated laser. It's the only one doing that. The form factor is small. Maybe a, bit, a little bit taller than Caltech P380 TLCP. Uh, the value is going to be high, maybe around mid 450 range by the time you pay for it. Look at the sights. It's got real sights, so did the SIG P238, but that's an expensive gun and it has a 1911 battery of arms that has to be mastered. For someone that doesn't know that or doesn't train that way, like I said in my review of that gun and some others, you might be better off with a double action only trigger and you can pretty much disregard that safety if you don't want to. Right? If you want to use a safety mechanism on it, you can, but you guys probably have a passive firing pin block and other safety features in there as well, right? We, you know, again, we're, we're, we're trying to give the end user the most options possible um, so exactly. to their preference. Excellent. All right, man. Those are the Bodyguard 38 and Bodyguard 380. Okay, dudes, continuing on in the Smith & Wesson booth. Uh, some of their reps are off to lunch. For me to hook up with them is probably going to be impossible. I'll just show you some of the guns I'm looking at in the booth. This is a G22. I'm not super stoked about it as far as the 22 goes. I don't like the high side on it, you know. I just don't like the form factor. I've never been stoked on it. I think the MMP 1522 is a much better option. Uh, your mileage may vary, you know what I say. I haven't shot it though, maybe I'd feel differently shooting it. Generally anytime I see a high sight configuration like this, especially when they're real plasticky sights like that, I am lukewarm. I'm just keeping it real dudes. Uh, PPKs imported by, are actually manufactured now by Smith & Wesson. I've heard various reports on these, I think Terry G at Impact was saying that uh, he's seen some issues with them. Uh, what I say is if you ever have any issues with your Smith & Wesson firearm, in this case, Walther Firearms, send it back to the factory. Give them a chance to fix it. They'll set you up. 
They'll hook you up. There's some Walther P22s. We've seen those at Gallery of the Guns. And there's that PK380 we talked about in the GOG visit. That's a popular gun, and I would actually think that would take a backseat to that new Bodyguard 380 that Walther, I'm sorry, Smith & Wesson's coming out with. That is a home run. I think the form factor on this uh, little gun right here, a little bit too big for me. And I have larger size hands, and the P series of grips, like the P22, which we'll see here in a second. Actually, we just saw one. There it is. That's a small grip, okay, uh, for me. Again, it depends. I know you can change the grips out on the back, but some guys will dig it. That's a PK-20 uh, 380. There's one with a slide down. Walther P99. I got lots of review requests for this, uh, the P99 series. This is a gun you really don't hear that much about. Okay, it's kind of under the radar, and guys are like, eh, what's up with the P99? I think it's a good gun. I haven't fired it yet, but I've heard, only heard good things about it. I think the ergos are good. I think it's a little bit heavy. Kind of is reminiscent to me of an HK USP in the thickness and in the weight uh, product. But it actually is a pretty good gun. Um, and guys will love the ergos on the Walthers. You can see it's the family resemblance here on this gun, the PK380. You saw the P22 right there. They're all the same. I would not recommend this gun as a carry gun. Not so much, but I'll tell you, that'd be a fun gun to shoot. There's a competition, SP22 M46, at least that's what the card says. There's that pink. You guys will laugh at this pink, go, well, that pink isn't popular. You know what? It's popular. This is one of their hottest selling colors. Am I right? I'm getting a head nod from the rep on the side. She wants to stay off camera. Definitely, and Gallery of Guns will tell you the same thing. Hey, here's the PPS previously reviewed in the Nut and Fancy house. You'll see, if I think about it, I'll annotate the video. Uh, that's a flat, flat 9mm carry gun. Again, it's kind of an under the radar gun though. You don't hear a lot about it. I mean, yeah, I got a review on it. If you were to Google, you know, the Walther PPS review, you'll probably see my review come up there in the Google returns. Uh, it's a good gun though. Uh, I think it has a good reputation. I know a lot of nut fancy guys have emailed me and said they love their PPS. Let's see what else is going on over here. We're gonna kinda do a flyby on their classic revolvers, uh, but I gotta move fast. We'll see if we can get a rep too. Let's take a quick trip over to the Smith & Wesson Performance Center side of the s and booth. Talking to Jim Ray, hey dude. How you doing? Thanks for uh, talking with us here at Nothing Fancy Project, and we're gonna discuss some performance specials. What you got there, dude? This particular one here is our M&P model, which is 357 Magnum 38, scandium frame, recessed cut for moon clips. It's lightweight, of course, five inch barrel, has a light equipment rail built into the shroud. Nice. And it's also set up for a detachable scope on the top. Cool. Trigger, uh, trigger work done on that? The trigger work is done on that. Performance Center still uses forge hammers and triggers, which incorporate the trap sear, same as was done all through time. Excellent. Uh, trigger pulls on these are about nine and a half pounds, smooth, crisp. We stone them before they get heat treated, before they go into the guns. Having reviewed your Model 686P, and I did a Performance Center version, I am very impressed with the trigger that came out of that. Very impressed. Very smooth. I, uh, and actually the 686 trigger as it comes normally, good trigger. But man, the one that came out of Performance Center, I, was, I loved it. Yeah. This one is again another eight shot revolver. Model 327. Model 327, coming to the other end of the spectrum, where it's a scandium frame with a titanium cylinder and a titanium shroud over a stainless steel sleeve barrel. Look at that. Same trigger work done on them, same moon clip availability on it. Just eight shot? Just gives you an eight shot end frame package with a lightweight and with a lot of firepower. Dude, no kidding. Let's see how. That is lightweight. Uh, that's going to be kind of a uh, stout to shoot maybe, although you do have a nice grip to you control a, it with. You do have a good grip. It's a little bit bigger frame, so you can a little bit better purchase on the grip. Right. So, But it's still a, he uh, a heavy gun to shoot as far as recoil wise. Performance Center model 327. That was also a 327 Correct. Model, right? Yep. Okay, Jim. This is one of three we're doing this year, which is a 2 and 5 8 inch stainless steel 44 Magnum. We're also doing it in 41 Magnum and 357 Magnum 8 shot. Nice. Unfluted cylinder, flash chrome hammer and trigger, uh, steel forge parts, ball detent lockup on a crane. 
what that really does is when it eliminates the need for the front locking bolt. Right. And when you have the lock in the ball here, since there's no drag in the front of the cylinder, it allows for a much smoother cylinder rotation, wow. which, which incorporates back to your trigger pull. Nice. That's going to be a stout gun, yes? Yep, no question about it. Yeah, heavy. Notice if I it's fall silent while he's... While I'm being shown something, I'm probably not totally enthused yeah. with it. <laughs> Sorry, that's just me. I'm genuine. Yep. Uh, but there's a lot of guys that will be very stoked about that gun. Yep. Uh, do you see your revolver, uh, dude, a fan of the Smith & Wesson line? They're not really super concerned about weight, are they? No, not Generally really. Generally speaking? Yep. I don't get that vibe at all. Yep. Uh, what do we have here? That 1911 well, PC? 1911 PC or the 945 PC is our hand-built pistols. Nice. Th th those are the guns that uh, we we take a forging that comes from the factory to us and we cut our own rail system into the slide and frame. And at that point in time, the machine operator in the NC machine laps the slide by hand onto the frame. So it will not, it will not go on uh, until it is lapped. The uh, slide frame go through a series of lappings, different grades of lapping compound until it gets final ready for assemble. So hand fit, hand slide fit, to frame. Slide to frame fit, yep. It's the barrel is hand fit, so you get a zero tolerance right between the barrel and the breech face. And this incorporates a slide stop lockup, which is cut specifically to this one barrel. Wow. It has a spherical bushing, titanium nitride coated. That's a gold coating over a stainless steel bushing, uh, which is matched to that one barrel. And uh, of course, it's, it's polished as an assembly and, in, and taken apart after, so you get the beautiful, perfect fit all the way over the gun. Just attention to detail. There's actually no raised yeah, lines exactly, at all on yeah. that mating of slide yeah. to frame. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's, it's a hand tuned. Uh, uh, Hammer sear we do on it, all stone by hand. Nice checkering uh, on the back nice strap. Nice checkering in the back Very strap. Very purposeful on the front too. Uh, on the front we do it also. It's got the scallop serrations. Yep, that's a very nice serration job for the slide. Yep. And then kind of a low profile ambidextrous safety it looks like. Yep. Skeletonized, uh, all the things you would expect on a high end 1911. Exactly. I mean, why even waste this, air time? Yeah, this, you guys know what they are. This is one of the big dogs, and it, you know it'll shoot the group to prove it. I bet you would stack that gun quality wise against any 1911 in the Anyone world. One ever made, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yep. And what's the price on that, Jim? These are twenty four hundred dollars. Okay. Suggested retail. Uh, and that fit and finish you're, you're talking about, and that we're seeing in the background, it costs money. Oh yeah. To have uh, engineers yeah, and craftsmen do that it's, stuff, it's right? All hand work. Yeah, so and some guys say, well, that's a lot of money. Again, you know, I'm a high value guy. To me, a thousand bucks for a handgun is like, whoa, I'm freaking yeah. out. But there's some guys that will pull the trigger on that, you know, no pun intended this time, yeah. and they dig it, right? Oh, no question. They dig about it. it. And, they, uh, and that's a lot cheaper than some other high end yeah. 1911s. I mean, yeah. you can walk down the booth here, and I, I saw one for $5,000. Oh, yeah, no matter how you cut it, the difference between a, a good 25 yard, four inch group and a one inch group is about $1,500. <laughs> I mean, and that's, and that's a, assuming the shooter can do it. That's right. It's the easiest way I can equate that, that make it make it as simple as possible, is because it's, it's hand work, hand work, hand work. Yeah. That's all you can do. Okay, how about this one? Can we take a peek at that sure. one? I really like the looks of that one. Yeah. Huh, imagine that. Black tactical, I like how it looks. Yeah, huh. that's, a, that's, a, that's a 1911 Crazy. platform, melanite. It's stainless steel gun with a melanite finish. Okay. Built exactly the same way as we've done uh, with our 945. Uh, we machined the rails on the slide frame ourselves. Uh, really tight fit finish. It's tight fit. It's, it's, it's put on with a lapping compound with a Babbitt hammer to get yeah. the first 20 or so strokes. Then we take it apart, take the compound off it, put more compound on, do it by hand. Those are my favorite gym grips. The stipple, these are those, walnut, right? Those are walnut, select walnut stipple grip. Made I by, love by those grips. Made by Roco Grips. Beautiful, uh, and they're functional. Uh, they give such purchase. Roco Grip in Bandera, Texas. Good enough. Has, I like these serrations, too, on the side. Those are gorgeous. It has a palm swell in it, which is, is, which is only seen, check that out. seen in real quality grips. Yep, you can kind of see how yep. it thickens through the yep. midsection there. Yeah. Checkered, uh, you know, back yeah, strap, 30 lines, strap. 30 lines per inch checkered. Everything you would expect strap. on a gun to this yep. level. Uh, good looking gun. Yep. Nice.
Got some big mamma jammas down here. I got a uh, run. Hey, can we see that 627, that one right there? Yeah, that's kind of a, a competition gun, yeah. is it not? Yeah, that's an eight shot. Is that like Jerry Mikulet? Yeah, that, that's, he, it, this is stainless steel, black and stainless. The gun he shot his records with was the same gun, but it was in uh, the white finish. Uh, that eight, guy is eight bad A, too. Of course, eight shot, moon clips, removable compensator on it. In size frame? Uh, in frame. But uh, in, in the white, the gun and Jerry shot his record of eight shots in one second right. was this gun. Look at that. And this was in 357, in right? 357. Eight shot 357. Yeah. For second type of cool, I would love to have this gun. I bet you this is a fun gun to shoot. I said that with a 686P and some other full size 357s I personally shot. They are just a blast to shoot. And this one's compensated too. So it's going to have every advantage uh, for the competitor, included the weighted barrel here. Compensation to get you back on the uh, target as quick as possible. Nice trigger on that one too, huh, Jim? Yeah. Then down here, real quick, I'll do a flyby. There's a 629. You saw that 620, uh, actually that 627, there's a one in silver. There's a big old Mamma Jamma 500 and 500 Smith & Wesson. 460 Smith & Wesson. Insanity. Use that as your concealed carry gun. I dare you. I dare you. Okay, so that was a quick look at the Smith & Wesson Performance Center pistols. Nice job, Jim. Thanks yeah. much. Thanks very Appreciate much. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah, and th this is a big operation here, the Smith & Wesson booth. There's lots of specialists, if you haven't figured that out right now, and they all have their uh, area of expertise. And Jim's was Performance Center. Thanks, dude. There's a shooter who knows what he's doing. Check this dude out. Amazing. These guys that do it full time, that's a tactical guru right there, my friend. Check this dude out. Check her out. Is that Julie Goloski? Shoot an M&P. Rock and roll, dude. I love that pistol. These Smith & Wesson shooters just amaze me. Amaze me. Some of the best in the world. Here's the M&P series. I don't have a rep to go over with you. I'm just going to show you real quick. This is Crimson Trace. Uh, equipped M&P 9, compact version, there's another one. If you've heard any bad reports on the M&Ps, don't believe it. Okay, these are great guns, great guns. They're reliable, relatively lightweight. There are lighter weight guns out there. Like I said in my initial tabletop review, I will update that. I love this olive drab coloration. I wish it was available in the 9 and 40. It looks like just for the 45. There's an M&P 45 with a thumb safety equip. Uh, I love that coloration and I like the size of that gun too. Love it. Full size. They have improvements to the M&P line with the Pro version that has just come out recently. You can look it up on their website. And coming over here, I'm going to do a quick flyby on some of their revolvers. M&P 360, 357 Mac. I love that barrel length. Look at that. And that's a lightweight gun. I would love, sorry the TV's so loud. Let me come over here. I would love to have this gun right here. Ultra lightweight, it has long enough barrel for better sighting radius. It's got one of those big dot tritium front sights on it. Amazing, love it. Uh, let me see the caliber on that. That is a 357. Amazing, so it's not just 38. I think all the M&P line uh, revolvers are actually. 340 CT, M&P 340, quick flyby. Sorry guys, don't have time for a big review. 360, MMP RA8, very similar to that 327 we just saw. And there's some MMP 15 rifles, just like we've seen in various configurations. The OR, or optics ready one, kind of like that one, is one of my favorites. I love that one. There's an the MOE equip one. More MMP pistols. MMP 9 full size, one of my favorites. We have the compensated one, or compact, I'm sorry. 357 SIG one. Love the MP series pistol. Let's do a quick walk over here. Check out this view right here. Uh, the MP promotion. There's Kyle Lamb, Viking Tactics. We saw him in the 511 booth review by Net and Fancy. Squared away tactical dude. Love those photos, those are awesome. And then quick flyby on some of the revolvers. Don't have time to cover in depth. There's a Smith and Wesson Model 48. Check that out, 22. But they're selling like crazy.
We could spend hours on this wall right here. These is a small frame, working on up to the medium frame revolvers at the Smith & Wesson booth. SHOT Show 2010 with an fancy. Look at that. I'm just going to do a quick flyby on some of these. 438, 351 PD, 317. I love that gun. Love this gun. This is a 22 long rifle, but it's very expensive. Uh, it will break the bank. But what a trail gun that is. It doesn't need any magazines. It's super lightweight. It has Smith & Wesson quality. Outstanding sights. Look at the sights on that thing. The fiber optic front and adjustable rear sight. Uh, yeah, you can see why I'm a fan. There's the snub nose version of that as well. I want one of those one of these days. Just love it. 637, 642. We've talked about these in tabletop reviews. There's a 638. One of my favorite airweight Smith & Wesson 38 specials with a shrouded hammer. I love the capability of fanning it to single action if I need to. User option, and I like options. 638, 642, 442. I'm probably making you dizzy. And we could go on and on. Uh, transitioning into the 360 PD line. We've talked about that, shown it in review a couple times in the Nut and Fancy project, right? Lots. We got some good folks here checking the pistols out. Can't show them. K&L frames. This is a medium frame revolvers. Again, we could spend hours here. I noticed there's lots of people behind me checking them out. What that tells you is there's lots of interest in revolvers, especially Smith & Wesson revolvers. There's our old friend, the 686. Previously reviewed in the Nut and Fancy project. Very positively, I might add. That is a quintessential full-size 357 stainless steel frame revolver, and it forever will be, in my opinion. Uh, there's lots of other good ones out there, but that racks and stacks with the best of them, in my opinion. There's a M67 and 38 Special, Model 64, and Smith & Wesson remains committed to producing these revolvers. It is the core of who they are. Uh, they have expanded in some really cool designs, like the Bodyguard 380, the Bodyguard 38, uh, I like that. There's a 629 and 3 and 44 Magnum, but they remain committed to the revolver line. They've reintroduced some of their classic revolvers, and those are selling like crazy, is my understanding. They cannot keep them in stock. They can't produce enough of them. There's a really nice gun, the Model 60 PS 357 Magnum. That is another one that personally, myself, I would love to have. I like the looks of it. I like the size. I like the midway barrel length or mid-length barrel on that. That's another cool one. Stippled grips, I believe laminated wood. That's a model 686 SSR and 357 mag. Fluorescent front sight, just like you saw in the uh, 357 686. Same thing, great guns. Then you have the Night Guard series. Uh, the only disadvantage on the Night Guard series, these are scandium frame, full size, uh, snub nose guns for the most part. And they come in a lot of different calibers as you can see, but they're bulky. They're very lightweight for what they are, the calibers they represent, but they're bulky. So you'll have to, as a user, decide if that's you know, something you can hang with. I am somewhat disappointed that some of these Smith designs, in fact, pretty much most of the ones you've seen, are hard to come by. Let's talk 1911s. They're hard to come by. That's because Smith & Wesson produce, uh, production facilities are cyclical in nature, just like a lot of the gun manufacturers we've seen. They'll crank it up, maybe the 1911 production, start bringing them out, and then once it shuts down, the guns sell out, and you may not see or be able to secure one of these uh, cool Smith & Wesson 1911s for a long time. You're going to have to wait. Uh, here's my favorite right here. Scandium frame, Smith & Wesson 1911 PD, and I'm going to acquire one of those, if I can, one of these days for testing in the project. I love it. It's not super heavy, and guys who think you have to have a steel frame 1911 to shoot fast and accurately with, uh, it helps. I'm not going to say the weight is not advantageous. It is but it's not necessary. I know from my own experience shooting that Taurus aluminum frame and that thing rocks uh, and rolls on range. And I like the, the, you know, the little bit uh, lighter carry weight. In this case, not aluminum, but scanning frame. That's my favorite Smith & Wesson 1911 as of now. Other good ones in the lineup, as you can see. Hard to find though, just like I said, you know, their production facility uh, doing the best they can and they just kind of get behind the power curve. We see the same thing with kel -Tec. We see the same thing with some other big names as well. Here's the 22 pistols. Haven't really talked about these in the Nut and Fancy project too much. This is a Model 22 by Smith & Wesson. And honestly, I'm kind of lukewarm to it. That's why you haven't seen me mention it at all. 
I think it's a great gun, but it's not lightweight. When they departed from the Smith & Wesson 422, this, the predecessor to this line, they added a lot of weight. And I think that the gun, the 22 semi-automatic that Smith & Wesson produces, lost a lot of charm and attraction for me personally when they made it so heavy. Why make it so heavy? As far as a range gun goes, as a just you know a recreational gun you're not going to hike around with, I think they'll rock and roll. I think they'll be fine. You know, no doubt. Uh, kind of lukewarm to the Sigma, myself. Yep. We saw one jam there on range there at Arm Serenity. That's just a data point. I don't condemn any gun for that. I mean, it can happen to any gun. I've seen pretty much all of them jam sooner or later. Um, so don't condemn it for that. That's just a very minor point. Uh, but, you know, I just, I don't know, just personally, I don't dig it so much. That's a quick flyby, though, showing the 1911s, Sigma series, the 22 pistol by Smith Wesson M22 in the night guard, blah, 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 blah. I got to go. This is a Smith & Wesson booth. This is nothing fancy. I did my absolute best to show you the guns as best I can. Uh, it's a lot of work, dudes. It's a lot of work making all this come together, but uh, there's some great guns here. Good people that helped us out and talked with us here at Smith & Wesson. This is nothing fancy signing off. SHOT Show 2010. Wow. That's me, dude. That's you. Yeah, I've seen you many times. <laughs> hey, man, what's up? Got more fans, got to say hi to. See you, dudes.